So far in this series, relative to medicinal pseudoscience, you know, the kind that actually kills people? Yeah, that one. I've covered hydrogen peroxide therapy and black salve, which are pretty high in the quackery scale. But in my opinion, magnet therapy takes a cake for being the craziest idea. And I've seen some crazy sh I'm talking about you, Jillian Epperly. At least with these, there's an internal medicinal aspect that sort of makes sense to a naive person because you're treating them like their actual medicine, either ingesting it or using it as an ointment. Hmm, maybe I should use this black salve to treat my pink eye. Well, guess I'm blind now. But using a magnet to heal your body? No. Magnet therapy is one of the oldest recorded medical treatments in history, dating back as early as 4000 BC in China. And if there's anything that's true about ancient medicine, it's that it has no scientific grounding whatsoever. Okay, so you're telling me if I bleed out a liter of blood, it'll cure my syphilis? Brilliant! Just a quick side note, magnet therapy is not to be confused with transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is a real medical treatment that's used by neurologists to treat depression and other neurological ailments. The application of magnet therapy today hasn't really changed since ancient times. You adhere a static magnet to a location on your body, either as a bracelet, a ring, knee brace, shoe insert, or under your mattress. Wait an arbitrary amount of time and you get the treatments. Two of the most commonly cited benefits of magnet therapy are pain reduction and improving blood flow. Which are of course wrong. Firstly, pain reduction. One problem with this is studies that try to show a correlation between pain relief and magnetism are consistently inconclusive. If a medical treatment is effective under the same conditions, it would show consistent results. This is how treatments are discovered and approved through stringent, repetitive testing. You wouldn't want a surgeon who performed inconsistently on the last dozen surgeries, right? You want someone who does good, consistent work. In a systematic review by the Canadian Medical Association Journal, 29 clinical trials that tested whether static magnets had any effect on pain reduction were reviewed. The analysis found there was no evidence to support any conclusions that magnetism relieved pain. Enhanced blood flow is often referenced as a benefit of magnet therapy. The obvious reason is that iron is in hemoglobin and iron is magnetic. Firstly, iron in your red blood cells is not ferromagnetic like elemental iron is, meaning it doesn't form a permanent magnetic field or have a strong attraction to a magnet. Elements that are ferromagnetic such as iron, nickel, and cobalt all have their own magnetic fields due to the arrangement of electrons within the atom. In the presence of a magnetic field, the electrons are oriented differently and become attracted to the field. This makes ferromagnets very strong and in fact able to retain their own magnetism. Iron and hemoglobin in red blood cells is not ferromagnetic but is either paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Paramagnetism is when something is very weakly magnetic and requires a very strong magnetic field to produce even a mild attraction. Uh, stronger. Stronger. Perfect. Examples are lithium, oxygen, potassium, titanium, and magnesium, just to name a few. If something is diamagnetic, then it completely repels the magnetic field. There's no attraction whatsoever. Examples are silver or gold, which is why they're used in jewelry. Quick summary, magnetism is based on the arrangement of electrons in the atom. Ferromagnetic elements have very strong electron arrangements. Paramagnetic have weak ones, and diamagnetic have opposite arrangements to the magnetic field. Alright, we good? Moving on. Wait, wait, wait. How can iron in your blood be in two different magnetic states? Well, because the iron atom in hemoglobin changes electron arrangements when it binds to oxygen, thereby changing the magnetic properties of the iron. This is because the job of hemoglobin is to bind and transport oxygen throughout the body, which it does quite well. When oxygen binds to iron, the iron atom has a charge of plus three, changing its electron structure to a diamagnetic state. When the iron is not bound to oxygen, its electron structure is at a plus two charge, making it paramagnetic. Yes, the iron in hemoglobin is technically magnetic, but hear me out, it's very, very weak. It's so weak that to observe even a slight attraction would require an industrial size magnet, like the kind inside an MRI machine. And even then the attraction is barely noticeable. In fact, the attraction is so weak that an average static magnet, even a neodymia magnet, are magnitudes too low to exploit any attraction. Yeah, but what about a really, really powerful magnet? Well, the Gauss rating of a typical static magnet used for therapy is between 800 and 12,000 Gauss, while magnets used in MRI scanners run between 20,000 and 70,000 Gauss. Surprisingly, when people go through MRI scanners, there's no effect on their blood circulation. It's almost as if there's no relation to magnetism and blood flow. Hmm. But even if you were relentless and still believe blood is magnetic because it has iron in it, 
you'd still be dead wrong. The majority of the blood in your body is diamagnetic and therefore repels the magnetic field. Recall that when iron and hemoglobin binds to oxygen, it becomes diamagnetic. Well, 96% of the hemoglobin in your arterial circulation and 70% in your venous circulation is bound to oxygen. This is best demonstrated in a video by Brainiac75 where he repels an entire bucket of blood using an industrial magnet. Even if you did have access to this kind of magnet, you'd only be weakly attracting a small minority of red blood cells. So the idea that you can alter or redirect red blood cells with a magnet is a no. Okay, blood isn't magnetic. Right. But magnetism must have an effect on blood flow. And why is that? Because, <clears throat> this scientific study in 2011 showed magnetism reduced blood viscosity. So, how about that? Are you fuck- In this study, blood was placed in a 1mm capillary tube, kept at 98 degrees Fahrenheit, and was moved past a magnetic field of 1.3 Tesla units, or 13,000 Gauss, for one minute. As a result, the red blood cells rearranged from scattered distributions to short linear chains, causing the viscosity to drop by 20 to 30%. Well, boys, I guess magnets affect blood flow after all. That's case closed. So, who's buying drinks tonight? <laughs> yeah, no, there is one small problem with this study. It's an in vitro study. The blood was tested outside the body, which is a big deal because it presents a bunch of different variables and should be taken with one hell of a massive grain of salt. Really, this study should be called the effects of blood in a magnetic field in a capillary tube outside the body, but it's not and it's misleading. This matters because blood inside the body versus in a tube are two very, very different things. In the body, blood is flowing through different sized vessels, changing flow rate and binding and releasing oxygen all under layers of muscle and skin. These same variables aren't occurring in the tube. This raises all kinds of questions. Is the blood in closer proximity to the magnetic field in the tube than it is in the body? Does the blood being outside the body change its properties that would affect the results of the experiment? The tube the blood was in was 1 millimeter, but blood vessels range in diameter from 8 micrometers up to 25 millimeters. So does this effect only happen to blood vessels? at one millimeter or are all sizes affected? There is a lot of unanswered questions here and according to the author's research history, there were no further investigations into these findings. Unfortunately for you pro-magnet therapy people, this study provides no evidence of magnetic fields having any reliable clinical effect on blood. It's merely an exploratory in vitro study lacking important biological conditions. So yeah, as it stands, magnet therapy is still quackery, has no real replicable or explainable effect on pain reduction, blood flow, or energy fields whatsoever. Alright boys, that's a wrap. So who's buying the round of drinks tonight? Oh, you guys. On the stupid scale, I'm rating magnet therapy at a 7 out of 10, and on the harmful scale, at a 1 out of 10. And uh, click the bell to subscribe, you know.